Good morning. So, I picked up my newspaper on the weekend, and there, on the front cover, was a story that caught my attention. Uh, so, if you read the headline, Warning over Britain's addiction to codeine. And the subheadings, Dangerous drug withdrawn from children's cough medicines, and demands grow, ban to be extended to adult painkillers. So, I thought codeine would be a very interesting drug for us to take a look at, going to have a look at the history, the structure, the chemistry, what's known, how dangerous is it, and why is it sold over the counter here in the UK. Codeine is effective for two things. It's an anti-pain medication and it also helps suppress your coughing reflex, so it helps with coughing. It's been used for very many years in pharmaceutical practice and you're looking here at a picture of one of the original pharmaceutical preparations of codeine. And codeine is available over the counter in pharmacies here in the UK with advice from the pharmacist. You can't just pick it off the shelf and buy it. But it's very often added into formulations with other common painkillers such as paracetamol or ibuprofen in relatively small amounts to give extra activity. So codeine is a naturally occurring component of the opium poppy. In fact, it's more commonly found in Iranian opium poppies than Afghani opium poppies. It's at higher levels in the Iranian opium poppy. And it was first isolated by a French chemist in 1832. Now, morphine had previously been isolated from the opium poppy in 1800. Um, and then codeine, the knowledge of codeine was added to that in 1832. And codeine, rather like morphine, is an active opiate type drug. Here we're looking at the structure of codeine and we're comparing it to the structure of morphine. And as you can see, there's just a single difference in terms of the chemical structure. One of the alcohol groups on morphine, specifically the phenol that's attached to the benzene ring at the top of the structure, has been methylated. It's been converted to a methoxy group, an OCH3 functional group. Now, interestingly, codeine itself is not an active compound. It needs activation inside your body. This is what we refer to as being a prodrug, where you take a substance in tablet form and then your body converts it into the active drug. And it's an interesting story because what happens with codeine as a prodrug is you take the tablet, the tablet goes through your stomach into the intestine where it gets absorbed into your body. And the first thing that happens is the codeine gets into your liver. Now, the liver, as we've said in some previous videos in this series, plays a key role in protecting your body against any drug that you take in and ingest. And the way it does that is it tries to turn a compound into a more soluble form so you can excrete it in your urine through the kidneys. Now, one of the things that makes codeine less soluble is that CH3 group. And so what your liver does is it unmasks the CH3 group and turns the methoxy group into a phenol, an alcohol. So in other words, your liver, in trying to protect your body from this unknown compound codeine, takes off the methyl group and turns codeine into morphine, which is then capable of having a pain-killing effect. And this is one of the reasons why codeine is an effective painkiller. Now what I want to do is go back and think about that liver metabolism of codeine in a little bit more detail because it's where some of the problems with the drug potentially arise from. And so what you're looking at here is a reaction scheme with codeine on the left and the things it's converted to on the right. One of the things it's converted to is morphine by loss of that methyl ether, as we've already said. Another of the things that happens is a glucuronic acid, a sugar unit, can get attached to the structure of codeine. And the reason that the body does that is that sugars are highly water soluble and that helps the codeine to dissolve in the urine, get removed by the kidneys um, and get passed out of the body in that manner. The other thing that happens to codeine metabolically within the liver is that the methyl group can be removed from the amine on the right hand side of the structure and that generates a compound called nor codeine. Now the problem with any prodrug strategy is that you're relying on the enzymes within the liver of the patient to convert the drug into its active form. And the key issue is that your liver activity depends on you as an individual. 
Every individual patient will have a slightly different response to codeine because you have different levels of the key enzymes which convert codeine into its active forms, morphine, the sugar conjugated uh, version of codeine, and so on. Some patients are slow metabolizers of codeine, and actually they take the drug and they get a limited pain-killing effect because their metabolism is inefficient at converting codeine into the active form. It has also been argued that some patients are fast metabolizers of codeine and will take a normal dose of codeine, but will get a much higher dose of potentially pain-killer active analgesic medication because they rapidly convert the codeine into more active forms. Interestingly, as many as 10% of the Caucasian population can have problems in metabolizing codeine too slowly, not having the necessary enzymes at the necessary levels to turn codeine into the pain relief form. However, more problematic are those individuals that are potentially fast metabolizers. And a key paper was published in 2004 in the New England Journal of Medicine. And it is worth a little look at this paper. So it's important to note that this paper only deals firstly with a single patient. Secondly, that the single patient was sick when he came into hospital. And thirdly, that he was taking other medication. However, the conclusions were that this patient became intoxicated by the codeine because firstly, he metabolized it very rapidly to morphine. And secondly, some of the other drugs that he was taking were interfering with some of the other metabolic pathways that help to excrete the codeine. In particular, the conversion of codeine to norcodeine was being blocked. So, if we look back at the reaction scheme, what that means is the codeine is much more rapidly converted into morphine and not so effectively converted into norcodeine, and that is the reason that was given why morphine type toxicity was observed in this patient. The question is, how common was the response of this patient to codeine? I would suggest this was a very, very rare response to codeine because codeine has long been used as an over-the-counter medication and this kind of effect has rarely been seen. The other problem with codeine is, of course, its addictive character. Codeine generates morphine in the body. Morphine is a known addictive substance. Now, codeine is only taken at low dose and only generates small amounts of morphine, but nonetheless, there is both physical and psychological addiction as a possibility with codeine. And people have, many people over the years, have had codeine addictions. For example, Elvis Presley was found with codeine in his body at the time of his death, and some have suggested it may have played a role in his ultimate demise. And Mel Smith, the comedian, has also stated that he had an addiction to Nurofen Plus, calling it his dark secret. The other thing worth noting is if you're breastfeeding, I wouldn't advise you to take codeine. Um, morphine can be passed on through the breast milk of mothers who are breastfeeding babies if they've taken over-the-counter codeine medications. And that can be significantly harmful to uh, the young baby that's feeding. So should codeine be banned? Well, I think it's right to remove it from children's medications. Any drug that relies on metabolism to be activated is particularly variable in children in terms of their developing metabolic pathways. So I think it's right to withdraw it for children. In terms of adults, no, I don't think it should be banned. Um, it does provide useful pain relief. It's an opiate class drug, so it is a much stronger pain reliever than paracetamol or aspirin. There are occasions when a patient's going to need to get pain relief of that type. So I believe in slightly more regulation of codeine, definitely not a ban at this point. We still want access to the medication, but perhaps there should be a pharmacy-based scheme, electronic registration, where you give your name and address. That information is held on a central database to which pharmacists have access. They can check whether you have previously purchased the drug recently from another pharmacy. In that way, we can control access to the drug, hopefully limit the harm that it does, and codeine in my view at this point, doesn't need to be banned outright.